One of the most common questions that I get asked time and time again is what time frame chart should I be using in my trading? And my response to that is always the same. You need to first determine what your trading style is and use that trading style to then pick and choose the time frame that best aligns with your personality. Now I understand on surface level, that sounds very loosey goosey. There's no concrete answer. In this video, my goal is to help you get to that concrete answer by contrasting, in this case, four different time frames. We'll look at the one minute, the three minute chart, the five minute chart, and the 15 minute chart, all using the same setups, all at the same exact times when specific trades trigger. My goal is to essentially paint a picture of what each time frame chart looked like, what were the different trade offs, what were the advantages and disadvantages of each time frame chart, and use all of that information to help you pick and choose which time frame is best suited for your particular trading style. Now, before we go through examples here, I think it's important to start by discussing why is even picking the right time frame an important aspect of your trading. To me, it comes down to something quite simple, which is there's few things in trading you can control. We have no control over things like what price is going to do next. We don't know where volume is going to pick up. We don't know which support resistance levels will actually hold. But one of the things that we do have control over is trying to set ourselves in the best position for success by choosing something that aligns with your trading style or your personality. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. For example, if you're a bit more of an aggressive trader, that means you prefer earlier entries, you don't mind getting stopped out more often, but you almost always hate overpaying, then that's where you may find smaller time frame charts to be better suited for you, something like the one minute or the three minute chart. Conversely, if you're also a shorter term trader, meaning you like to get in and out quickly, you don't like to stay in trades too long, then you may still find that one and three minute to be a better sweet spot than the longer time frame charts. Conversely, if you're much more of a conservative trader, you prefer to see confirmation signals, you don't mind overpaying for that confirmation, so that I would consider conservative, then you may find the five or the 15 minute to be a better signal. Also, if you're a longer term trader, meaning you like to ride trends out longer, you have a higher risk tolerance, but you'd like to make it quote unquote worth your while, then you may find something like that 15 minute to be better suited for your trading style. And I'll show you some examples of what I mean. The 15 minute chart here, for example, especially with the recent volatility, has given you some incredible moves. I'm talking $7,000 a contract in the NASDAQ sort of moves, but that did not come without the trade off of needing to accept greater risk, also of needing to accept not getting your most ideal entry. So there's all sorts of trade offs here, and my goal is through the examples we cover, you'll have an idea of those trade offs on a visual scale. Now, before we continue, one small note for our volatility box members, and I'm going to be using our volatility models for this exercise, but you can choose whatever indicator set you'd like. The idea is still the same. But for our volatility box members, some commonly asked questions. One, regardless of what time frame chart you choose, the volatility box will plot the same. The models, the levels, everything stays the same. The thing that does change is the edge signals indicator, and you'll see how that factors in as we go through examples. The concepts we discuss are relevant and applicable to both the futures volatility box, which is what we'll focus on in this video, for examples, but also the stock volatility box as well. The whole idea is different time frame charts will show you that same setup in different angles, different perspectives, and it's up to you to pick and choose the one that best aligns for you. Now with that introduction out of the way, let's start by taking a look at some examples. And the first one we'll start with is an example in the S&P 500. This is off of either the uh, micro or the full size futures contract. So that's ES or MES. The trade setup that we're going to be discussing took place on Feb 2nd, 2022. And the breach that happened was at 9.47 AM Pacific time. Now my takeaway or the goal of this particular example is to show you or demonstrate how an early entry can sometimes lead to having to deal with a little bit of heat on that trade versus a later entry in which we didn't have to deal with that same heat, but you also didn't have the benefit of being early into the trade. So let's start by taking a look at this example. Now, let me move forward. So this is the example inside of the S&P 500. This was Feb 2nd. The setup actually came in this short opportunity when price breaches our upper edge of the volatility box. The red arrows are the edge signal indicator that I was alluding to, and that's what changes. So right now we're on a one minute time frame chart. Let's start by taking a look at what actually happens here. So our entry is at the sign entry line. Our stop is outside of the clouds. 
and we're looking for the same move as our T1, which we can see here eventually price does give us that same T1 zone. Now, what you should notice before we actually go and hit our T1 is once we get the edge signal and we have our entry, we have a little bit of heat that we have to deal with on this particular trade, at least off of the one minute time frame chart. So that's a summary here of the one minute chart is if we look at the one minute time frame, we had the early entry, we had the early signal here, but you did have to deal with price going against you for just a little bit. Regardless of that little bit of heat, as long as you didn't get shaken out, we, our first contract still hit that same first target that we were looking for, and our second contract also hit our second target, which is this great target line. So in the end, the result here off of the one minute time frame chart was you had a little bit of heat, but this trade was still a winner hitting T1 and T2. Now, if we contrast this with something like, say now, the three minute time frame chart, so you can see that right here, three minute, same exact setup, so price breaches our volatility box entry line. Step one, we're looking for the edge signal, which in this case comes a little bit later while the trade is still active. We have yet to hit either the stop or our first target. We get that three minute edge signal confirmation quite a bit later compared to when we got it on that one minute time frame chart. On the one minute, that entry was somewhere here, and we had to deal with this bit of heat. On the three minute, we're getting the signal after we've already had this heat, and now we're starting to make our move what feels like at least towards our target. We don't know that real time, but in the end, we did hit T1, T2. So the takeaway from the three minute time frame chart here is the actual signal took place a little bit later compared to where we had the one minute entry. And if we look at this off of the same advantages, disadvantages, the three minute, we had less heat in that trade, but we had a later entry. In this case, that later entry still gave us an opportunity to enter at the same sign line price. But what you'll notice eventually is the one minute sometimes will even give you an opportunity to cut your risk in half. That didn't happen here. So the three minute, one minute didn't really change in terms of the entry price. It didn't also change in terms of the actual target. We still hit that same first uh, target and the same second target without being stopped out anywhere along the way. So the one minute, three minute had very similar end results, but you had a little bit more heat along the way in the one minute compared to the three minute. Now let's move on and contrast this with the five minute time frame chart. So again, same exact setup. Now this is that same breach on the five minute chart. You can see the time when we actually get the edge signal confirmation here is after we've already hit our first target. So it's a very late entry here. For our rules, we did not have any trade here using the five minute time frame chart the edge signal had already printed by the time we hit the first target. So we've already, this is no longer an active trade. We've hit what would have been our first target. The trade is now done and complete. And by trying to stick with the five minute chart, you essentially missed this opportunity. So we had no setup there. And if we look at this on a zoomed out basis here, in the end, this was really just a pullback to our market pulse in an otherwise new bullish uptrend, right? This is, of course, a zoomed out after the fact basis. But if we take a look to see what happens on the five minute, this was just a pullback where by the time we had the signal, we'd already pulled back much of the move. The edge that we have had already dissipated. Now let's contrast this with the 15 minute time frame chart. So same thing right here, the breach on the 15 minute time frame. We don't see any edge signal confirmation here, which is the takeaway from this. This was a counter trend trade and the 15 minute chart give us no signal at all and no valid setup. So to recap here on this first example in the S&P, the one minute and the three minute both gave us the signals and the entry that we were looking for. They met our rules. In this particular example, what I'm hoping to demonstrate is the one minute you had to deal with a little bit more heat, the three minute much less heat, but you got that entry a little bit later. And the five and the 15 minute, if you're trying to be too conservative, gave you no setup in this particular case. Now let's move on to another example, this time inside of the Dow. And this is from February 4th, 2022. And this setup was at 7.38 a.m. Pacific. Now my goal with this particular example is to show you how the early entry, so something like that one minute time frame chart here, gave you an opportunity for reducing your risk, less risk. We had about uh, half of the actual risk compared to waiting for a slightly later term entry with that same confirmation that a conservative trader might like. So let's take a look at the example here. So inside of the Dow, our setup comes when we have price action breach our sign entry line. We then see this edge signal confirmation as price sinks lower down into the clouds. And that gives us a better opportunity for an entry price. We have an entry at the clouds compared to the sign entry line, which is our normal entry. 
That means we also get a chance to reduce the risk that we have on this trade by basically one half. So that's another advantage of having this early entry. Now let's take a look to see what actually ends up happening here. So off of the one minute time frame chart, we had the early entry inside of the clouds. We reduced our risk by one half based off of what was actually required on this trade. Now in terms of our targets, we still hit our T1, our first target, which is that same level that we've risked, so the cyan line to the outer edge of the clouds. The only difference is, in this case, we only had to risk this much on a one minute time frame chart to make essentially a heck of a lot more. We're still going for that same first target. Our second contract still hits that same T2 level. So in terms of the end result here, we hit T1, we hit T2, and we've able to reduce our risk by half by going with the one minute time frame chart. If we contrast this now with the three minute time frame chart, you can see that right here. Let's look at that same example. So we have that breach. Now we're looking for the edge signal confirmation, which comes a little bit later. We don't have that same cloud entry. In fact, by the time the edge signal comes, our entry is much closer to that cyan entry line. And you're able to reduce that by just a handful of points, nothing too substantial. So we still have slightly reduced risk, but not as much by, uh, but not as much as waiting for something like that one minute chart. So if we try and see where that signal came place, that was right here with the green arrow. Once we have it, very little heat still on this trade and the Dow continues moving in the same direction. So our takeaway on this three minute time frame chart, no heat, but we also lost the benefit of having an early entry. We had to still take that normal defined risk, which is at the sign entry line, stops outside of the clouds, and we're looking for the same distance on the opposite side compared to that one minute time frame chart where our risk was something like this and still looking for that same uh, reward on the flip side. So that's your trade off between the one and the three minute. Now in terms of the end result, we still hit T1, we still hit T2. So the end result there ended up being the same. Now if we move on to the five minute time frame chart here, you should notice a repeating pattern here. So this is now a five minute time frame chart. We had the breach with this red candle. We're looking for the edge signal, which comes a little bit later on. And in terms of the actual entry, we were looking for an entry at the sign entry line. We never get a touch of that once we get the edge signal on a five minute. So by waiting for a confirmation here, we didn't have the same setup that we would like per our trade plan rules. So to summarize the five minute, we could do that by saying the five minute time frame chart, the edge signal, very similar to the example in the S&P, printed by the time we had already hit our first target. So the trade is no longer active. You've already had a chance to essentially take money off the table by the time the five minute signal is just printing. But what should stand out on a zoomed out basis is despite the fact that you did not get that same entry at that sign entry line, from the close of the candle all the way up to the very high, assuming you had a magical crystal ball, still led to a 400 point rally. So by waiting for that confirmation on a higher time frame chart, that signal also holds a little bit more weight, right? You trust the five minute much more than say a one minute signal. And you can see how that still transpires to a real nice move inside of the Dow. So that's the other takeaway with the five minute chart is the five minute signal, while it may lead to slightly later entries, still has a greater weightage compared to the one or even the three minute time frame chart. Now let's move on to the 15 minute time frame chart of the same example. So moving on to the 15 minute chart here, we have the breach. We never see the edge signal confirmation in the case of the Dow. So no real signal, meaning no valid trade setup for us using that same trigger. So the 15 minute chart, fairly simple, no signal, no valid trade setup, but you'll see how the 15 minute when we do see that signal does have additional weight than even the five, the three or the one minute chart. And I have some examples for that at the end. But let's keep moving forward here. I have another example for you now, and this time inside of the NASDAQ. We've looked so far at what happens with early entries, heat, winning trades. Now inside of the NASDAQ, this trade is from Jan 25th. This is at 10.33 a.m. Pacific. And this time, the proof that I'd like to show you, or the takeaway rather, is the flip side of this, what happens in a losing trade. The early entry, so something off of the one minute time frame chart, stopped out. So this was the trade off by trying to be early, trying to reduce your risk, trying to essentially capture that trade. In this case, led to a stop out compared to no entry at all using something like the three minute and greater time frame chart. So let's take a look at this example now. So inside of the NASDAQ, our setup comes when price action breaches our sign entry line. We have the edge signal confirmation, multiple signals here actually along with an opportunity to enter at the sign entry line. 
So that's the actual setup here if we start by drawing this out. So our entry came once we had this edge signal and we had this retracement to the sign entry line. And we can see price continues to just drift outside of our clouds. That essentially means a stop out. So off of the one minute time frame chart, we had an early entry, we had multiple signals, we had everything meet our rules, but both that first and second contract were stopped out. Now let's take a look at the same setup, but this time on a three minute time frame chart. So on the three minute, we have that same breach. We never see the edge signal confirmation, part two, telling us that we're officially oversold. And that keeps us out of this stop out on a three minute time frame chart. So the lesson in the three minute, this time being a little bit more conservative, kept you out of trouble. In this case, no edge signal, no valid trade setup. We can move on looking for our next opportunity. If we look at this same setup on the five minute chart, you should notice the same theme, no edge signal on this time frame chart. So same thing, no edge signal, no valid trade setup, we can continue moving on, keeps us out of a loss, keeps us out of trouble. Now, finally, moving on to the 15 minute, very similar theme here. By the time that 15 minute edge signal does come, you can see the type of move we get into the close. So this gives you an idea of the additional weightage as we increase in time frames, what that actually means for the signal, both in terms of long signals right here, leading to the rally along with the short signals, but we don't get anything that meets the actual trade setup that we're looking for. So 15 minute chart as well, no edge signal and no valid trade setup. So the takeaway on this NASDAQ trade, as we saw, the one minute did give you the early entry, which in the example of the Dow gave you an opportunity to reduce your risk. This time that early entry translated into being stopped out versus using a slightly more conservative time frame chart like the three, the five or the 15 would not have given you an entry at all. So a few different examples in the S&P, the Dow and the NASDAQ. Now let's move on to one final bonus section which is for those of you that are more longer term traders, your swing traders, or you'll at least like to stay in for much more than a few minutes. Let me show you some examples of our 15 minute edge signal, meaning our rules, since we haven't seen any of those yet. The takeaway here is this setup using our 15 minute edge signal is ideal for longer term traders looking for much bigger moves. I'll show you some examples in just a second, but that also means you have much higher risk tolerance. For those of you trying to find a way to mitigate that additional risk required, ETFs here offer you a great alternative along with the micro futures contracts. But for some of you, the micro futures may still be large for some of these setups where you can use things like SPY, DIA, QQQ, or even options on those particular markets. And even things like that zero days or maybe one or two days the expiration contracts, which allows you to reduce the cost that's involved. Now let's take a look at some examples here. And this is all the same example, the same day rather, but I wanna show you how it looked like in all four of the index markets. This is on Jan 24th, 2022, and the breach came at 9.15. We'll start with the NASDAQ chart here first, and I'm on that 15 minute time frame chart. Now the setup inside of the NASDAQ comes as price action hits our sign entry line. So that's step one. And then we're looking for the edge signal confirmation, which comes right here. So what you can see is we've already hit quote unquote the first target of this particular hour. So in terms of our volatility box trade plan, doesn't meet the rules in terms of giving you an early entry there. What this does help you do though, is understand where essentially we're now moving away from the volatility box and that 15 minute edge signal, which we already said had greater weight, allows you to capture a really nice entry point for the rest of the day. So this is where if you're in it for say a few minutes, there's a good deal of heat in this entire fluctuation here. However, if you're in it for, say, the entire day or a much longer time period, you can see how that 15 minute chart allowed you to capture really that reversal, which is now finally confirmed. So there's no early entry or anything of that sort. And from the close of this candle inside of the NASDAQ, the edge signal confirms that deeper correction, which doesn't give you that same entry at the sign entry line but it does give you a 600 point rally inside of the NASDAQ, which is about $12,000 on the full size contract. So it's a fairly substantial move. Again, this is if you got out at the very top, which hindsight is 2020. So that's not what I wanna focus on here, but the point that I think I'm trying to drive home is waiting for this confirmation, that 15 minute signal away from the volatility box gives you a much better idea, a better signal with greater weightage that we're looking for a pretty substantial move now away from the lows that we made right here with the volatility box. So that's one takeaway inside of the NASDAQ. Looking at the same setup inside of our other index markets, let's move on next to uh, the S&P here. 
So inside of the S&P, that edge signal comes. Again, similar. We hit the volatility box sign entry lines, bounce away from there. So we get the 15-minute signal. Inside of the S&P, very similar setup here. We don't get the sign entry line, but we still did get a 150-point rally from the actual close of our edge signal candle. That's right here. This close, marking from there and seeing the rally that we had into the final hours of the market. So the S&P, another nice example of this. Moving on next, the Dow, same idea here. So inside of the Dow, we have the same setup. And this time, that edge signal gives you about a 1,000-point rally inside of the Dow. And you can see the signal right here. Once we have it form, really very little heat on this trade, just continues to keep going up, up, and up. And finally, the last example inside of the Russell here looks a little bit different inside of the Russell. But inside of the Russell, we have the same setup again price hits our volatility box sign entry line we get the edge signal confirming this move and from the close of the edge signal candle we have about an 80 point rally inside of the nasdaq so in all four of these examples here we didn't get the entry at the sign entry line so if you're a bit more aggressive or you don't like overpaying then the 15 minute may not be the best fit for you However, if you're looking for that longer time frame setup, you're not looking to get in and out in a few minutes, but you'd like to see some of these more substantial dramatic turnarounds for the day, well, that's where you may find the 15 minute chart to be a little bit more useful for your trading style. So again, on the Russell, that edge signal that confirms this move comes right here. So hopefully today's video gives you visual examples of contrasting different time frame charts. What are the trade-offs involved? Let's do a quick summary before we wrap this video up. So first off, choose the time frame that best aligns with your trading style. There's few things that we can control in this quote unquote sport of trading. We can't control what happens next. We have no idea what sort of news events may hit, but what we can do is choose the time frame that sets ourselves up for success and is best suited for our trading style. There will be trade-offs. There is no free lunch. For example, the one minute time frame chart will offer you early entries, also give you an opportunity for reduced risk. But as we saw in the examples, that may also lead to some stop outs because you tried to get an early entry. The three minute is a nice sweet spot which offers confirmation of signals, but there'll be plenty of times in which waiting for that three minute signal does not give you the same entry price as that one minute did, meaning either additional risk or you may even miss certain trades. The five minute chart continues on the same theme, so it offers better confirmation, but reduces your likelihood of having an entry at that same sign entry line. And finally, the 15 minute offers even greater confirmation, greater weightage to the signals, and is better suited for longer time frame moves, but also means you won't always, in fact, most likely will almost never get that same sign entry line. So it does require you to take additional risk. And there's a few ways you can mitigate that risk by doing things like using micro futures, ETFs, ETF options, whatever works for you, your trading style and your account size. Hopefully today's video helps to give a more visual answer to all those folks who have the question of what time frame chart should I use. This is one way that you can go about doing the exercise. You can repeat this again using whatever setups you like. In this video, I showed you using our volatility box setup, but I'm sure many of you have your own set of setups and your own set of time frames, which you can contrast and identify what works best for you. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.